Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to be painting on my back porch because it's nice outside and I still got a little more time before the sun comes, um, starts to set. But um, this painting is something different. My little brother wrote a poem um, led by the Holy Spirit and when he was reading the poem to me, God showed me a vision of a painting. And so, um, I'm going to show you the painting that God showed, well, the picture that God showed me as my brother was reading the poem out. And it also coincides with the revelation um, that God gave me. So, this painting is really for all believers, anybody who is struggling in the mind. Because one thing the enemy loves to do is attack the believer's mind. And um, so, yeah, so anybody who is struggling with any thoughts or um, anything that's like discouraging, um, this painting is for you to let you know that God is alive, God is real, and God is the God that will keep you, keep your mind clear, keep your mind sound. Because his word says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so anytime uh, fear tries to come over you, it's just the enemy trying to get you to not have a sound mind. So I'm excited about this painting and I hope it inspires you. I hope it just reminds you that no matter what the enemy tries to tell you, you will be all that God has created you to be. Before we move forward, you already know what I'm going to say. Take a minute, pause the video, do your I am statements. Anybody who is new to the channel, if it's your first video, just know I am statements. You're bringing God's name into everything that you're professing because he is the I am. So I want to start. I am an artist. I am a child of God. And so um, just take a minute and pause. Say your I am statements and then come back. Y'all, when I tell you that God just blew my mind, I'm sitting here talking to him about just helping myself. And he literally gave me a whole message about deliverance. Like, he basically told me that a person can't be delivered if the person who's supposed to be the deliverer has the spirit on them. And so every time that you conform, com, conform to like the environment that you're in, any time that you accept a certain behavior, you're basically embracing that spirit. Therefore, you're wondering why all these people are not being delivered or why all these people are stuck in the places that they are. It's because the people that are around them are conforming to the environment, meaning embracing the spirit, meaning a spirit cannot drive out another spirit, which reminds me of the scripture in Matthew when the Pharisees were telling, saying that Jesus was a demon. And he was saying, thank you, Holy Spirit. And he was saying how a demon cannot drive out another demon because they're part of the same kingdom. And if you're part of the same kingdom, why would you cause chaos amongst the same kingdom? Y'all, trust in God and know that it's okay. Because in order for somebody else to get set free, you have to stand firm and you have to know that you're not going to become what they become so that they can be set free and so they can reach out and others can be set free. And also, and you're wondering, like, it's so hard. We're part of the world and everything like that. God gave me another revelation. You know how Jesus was a part of this? Like, he was born in this world, but he wasn't a part of the world because he kept his mind focused on the kingdom. And this is what is powerful about keeping your mind focused on the kingdom. When your only thought process is pleasing God when your only thought process is the kingdom of God, nothing else will matter to you. It doesn't matter what the newest trend is. It doesn't matter what the music is playing because at the end of the day, when you go back, when you go to that kingdom, that stuff won't be there. 
None of the stuff that you worried about in the world will be there when you get to heaven. Heaven is a whole new place. And so you have to change your mindset and not want the stuff of the world. And this description, when we say, when, there, when God tells us, seek first his kingdom and then all things shall be added to you. He's not just talking about material things because we like to reference all the material things of the world. No, he's talking about discipline. He's talking about discernment. He's talking about your faith. He's talking about a change in mindset. He's talking about knowledge. He's talking about revelation. He's talking about his love. He's talking about his protection. He's talking about his um, him being a provider. When you focus on his kingdom, when you focus on his home, when you focus on where you need to be, he's going to make it so that you wouldn't long for anything. And the reason why you won't long for anything or why you won't necessarily want for anything or why you won't be conformed by the world, but being transformed is because the things he adds on to you will make it, it will allow you not to want that stuff. His discipline, he'll add to you. His faith, he'll add to you. His prosperity, he will add to you. His love, he will add to you. His discernment, he will add to you. So you will have those things. And then you will have the wisdom and stuff and know how to do certain things, how to move certain ways. So other things won't even look appetizing to you because you know God's kingdom. It all starts right here change your mindset change your mindset focus on God's kingdom and everything will be added to you all of his things that are not monetary will be added to you that way you'll be able to still live in this world but not be conformed by it just look at the walk of Jesus he was able to live in this world but not be conformed by it. All of Jesus' needs were met. He didn't want for anything. He didn't need anything. Because every time he was preaching, every time he was going out doing miracles, everything that he did, he done it, he did it knowing the kingdom, knowing God's mindset, knowing what God wanted him to do, believing in his kingdom, seeking the kingdom of God. Everything he did, if you read the gospel, if you read about Jesus, he always went back to, I'm doing the will of my father. He always went back to that. Always. Always went back to, I'm doing the will of my father. So look, y'all. Change your mindset. Seek first the kingdom. Get somewhere and really ask God, what am I supposed to be doing for your kingdom? What am I supposed to be doing? And once God reveals it to you, because he will, all you got to do is ask. Once he reveals it to you, focus on that and learn, study about that, learn what to do with that. And God will boost you. And yes, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it is hard. I'm not going to lie to you because some of the music be catchy. Some of the trends be catchy. Some of the stuff is catchy. But don't sit around and later on ask God why certain people are committing suicide in your life that you know. Why certain people are going down a certain path that you know. It's strictly because when you are around those certain people, you embrace the spirit and therefore you are not able to let them be set free. <laughs> That's just so crazy to me. Like, y'all like, wow. Because it all it took was Jesus' presence. 
And them demons knew who he was and was asking him. They knew that he was driving them out because Jesus is light and darkness cannot withstand the light. So they knew that it was coming out. Some they, they knew it was coming out, so they just made themselves present. And that's the same thing with the, look, there is the Bible said there is nothing new and there is nothing old. There's the same thing that's happening today. All you people that's a part of God's kingdom, you embrace that light. Your light is shining. Yeah. And them demons, they start to manifest too. Yeah. But they also tricky. They also know how to entice you. They make you want to embrace them. Because they know if you embrace them, they can't come out. They cannot come out. So be careful what you're embracing. Be careful what you're listening to. Be careful what you're doing. And I'm guilty of it, y'all. <laughs> I am guilty of it. The reason why I got on, the reason why I got this revelation from God is because I sit here, I was sitting here praying for someone and God started showing me about what deliverance is because I was praying that they got delivered and he started showing me about what deliverance is and what it takes to be a person to deliver because I'm praying for these people to be delivered for God to send people to deliver them for a day to hear something for them to be set free. And God is sitting here telling me this is what it takes. And the reason why this person is not delivered, the reason why this person keeps doing X, Y, and Z is because the people that he's around, the people that can deliver are embracing the spirit that is a part of that person. And then I went into a further discussion as to, well, we're part of the world. It's a lot of stuff going on. Like, how do you not do that? And God just reminded me about seeking his kingdom. If you pay attention and focus on his kingdom, none of the other stuff happens. Because we mostly, at times, we, when we do certain things, we're just like, oh, well... X, Y, Z is doing da, 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 da. What about X, Y, Z? What about this? What about that? And honestly, most of the stuff that we're worried about is about the world. It's about the stuff that's in the world. But when Jesus comes back, guess what? None of that stuff matters. None of that matters at all. Because in heaven, you get a new home, a new place. It doesn't matter. None of it really, none of it really matters. That's why Ecclesiastes, you need to, you should read the book, but only read that book when you're truly re ready for the revelation and the change. Ecclesiastes talks about how nothing really matters. And that's true. Nothing of this world really matters. It's just stuff. Focus on the kingdom. Focus on the kingdom, y'all. Before I begin, I want to say a quick prayer. Um, Father God, we just want to say thank you for um, this awesome day. Thank you for just being so amazing, so awesome. God, I ask that you will come and touch the minds of every um, viewer, God. Whatever they are worrying about, whatever they are fearful about, I ask that you silence it, God. I ask that you will come in and let them have your peace. Remind them of your goodness. Remind them of who you are, God. You said if we keep our minds stayed on you, that you will give us peace. And we know that your peace is perfect, God. Father God, you also said that if we cast our cares upon you, um, that you will help us, God. So we just cast everything on you, God. We cast everything on you. We um, give you every um, worry every um traumatic thing everything that is causing our minds to go wayward god and we just ask for a sound mind for you said in your word that you have not given us the spirit of fear but 
of power, love, and the sound mind. So we decree and we declare today that every person watching this, God, has a sound mind in you. And we thank you for everything. And Lord, we just ask that you just continue to just bless us, continue to just guide us to you. And even now, Lord, as I paint this painting, I ask that you guide me. Show me the right colors. Show me the right things to do, God. And just have the glory from all of it. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. This is the rough sketch. Um, water got spilled on it, so it's all over the place. But this is what I'm going to attempt to draw. The Invitation by Caleb Obadelli. I feel my light is being suffocated by the praise and parades of darkness. My heart becomes darkened and my mind open to the ways of this world. Letting this world fool me into thinking I'm living day by day without a price to pay. This world gives you a role and it's your choice if you want to play. One day you'll be saved from the big bad wolf. But what happens when the wolf persuades you that he's only bad because of opinions? And the wolf lies to you to make you lie in bed with distraction and destruction. To make your mind full of light dysfunction and double-minded, undecided about the truth of it all. The God has made you and chosen you. The wolf tells you to put on your mask to hide the broken pieces, reminding you that no one else can see this because if they do, you'll be embarrassed. You will be judged. And the people who you think cares for you never did. The wolf tells you to push away love and encouragement and hide yourself so no one can see you hurting what a sad reality to face as the wolf blows in your face deceit and deception and you breathe the polluted air as he provides saying there's only one place to reside and that's death he has you falling unto death he lies you down into your death he sends your mind crazy into death he says there's a marriage between you and i and i vow unto death do us part he instructs you to believe you will never be forgiven you will never be loved you will never break free lie after lie he fills your brain until the light ends Sitting in silence as my mind goes wild, and I think about how I got here. I hear a voice soft and firm that says, child, get up from this place of misery and follow my voice. Through the darkness, the voice guides me. As I follow, I see faded memories of tragedy, but I still follow until I see an imitation on the ground, labeled John 3.16. And then in front of me appears a door, I, and I hear knocking. The wolf comes back, just as I reach to open. The wolf says, don't open the door. Aren't you afraid of what will happen if you do? I'm not letting you go. He will not have you. I look back at the invitation and I pause and think, does God really love me? I lift my head and I read the words of my salvation to the wolf and the wolf growls at me. I fall to my knees and I cry out, help me. The door opens and light surrounds me. And I hear the voice again saying, you are forgiven. I felt a strong wind come over me that gave me chills. His light overcomes darkness and break chains for real. All right, I am done with the painting. This is how it looks. I just want everyone to know out there that God is protecting your mind. The rainbow represents God's promises and you all can look up the scriptures. In the description box, I will put the, um, the scriptures um, below. But I just want to let you know that the enemy has no power over your mind. Your mind is free because God is protecting you. And his promises are always yes and amen. So be free in Christ.